Hey friends, so today begins a new unit on linear systems and what we want to do in this first lesson is kind of introduce the concept of what a linear system is. Um, that's my first kind of goal and then my second goal is what the solution to a system means. Okay, um, I want to be clear that this first lesson I skipped one really important point which was solving the system. Solving the system is really what we're going to talk about for the rest of the unit. Okay, there are going to be kind of three main ways we solve the system. But today I want us to start understanding how to build the system and then how to essentially ensure that the solution is really the solution and that's called a process of verification. Okay, um, so that's what we're gonna focus on today. Um, I'm gonna start you off with this little problem that I want you to see if you can figure out on your own. Okay, so it says Farmer Wilson was asked how many ostriches and zebras he had on his farm. He answered, between the two, there are 60 eyes and 86 legs. How many ostriches and zebras does Farmer Wilson have? Okay, you have enough information in your own head and in your own knowledge of math from junior high um, that you could come up with a solution to this problem. Okay, um, so go ahead and do that. Pause me, come up with the solution. Okay, so I assume what you probably did was kind of a logical guess and check, okay? Um, what I would want you to have been familiar with is to think, okay, well, I know that on every animal, there's gonna be two eyes, and on, on an ostrich, there's gonna be two legs, and on a zebra, there's gonna be four legs. Okay, you can't go hacking legs off just to make this work, just FYI. Um, so what you probably did was you thought of, okay, well, let's just call ostriches here and let's put zebras here and let's think about the number of legs. Now, the reason I'm gonna think about the number of legs is mainly because I know they all have two eyes. So if they all have two eyes, whether I'm an ostrich or a zebra, um, that means I have to have 30 animals. Okay, so I'm just gonna, if I'm doing this just logically, I'm gonna split it down the middle and I'm gonna say, okay, let's say I have 15 and 15. I have an equal number of ostriches and zebras. Okay, for legs then, that would give me, well, this would give me 30 ostrich legs and this would give me 60 zebra legs. So all together, I would have 90 legs. Now, when I read this, <clears throat> I'm supposed to only have 86. So 90 legs is too many. So I have to adjust this. If 90 legs is too many, that tells me I need more ostriches and less zebras, okay? Because ostriches only have two. So every time I add an ostrich, I can fix my total here essentially by two legs. So if I say 16 and 14, that's gonna end up giving me, well, let's look, this would be 32 and 14 times four is 50, uh, sorry, 56. And so that gives me, 88 legs, okay? So still too many, but I'm going in the right direction. If I did that one more time, if I added one more ostrich and subtracted one more zebra, see, I still have 30 animals, so my eyes still work, okay? But now, 17 times two and 13 times four, when I add that together, that gets me the 84 legs that I, oh, sorry, 86 legs that I wanted, okay? 86 legs that I wanted. Okay, so the answer is 17 ostriches and 13 zebras, okay? Now, as I'm sure you've heard me say before, it's never about the answer. Um, what I want us to do is develop this question in the light of what we call a system of equations. So we're gonna start with a little legend and I'm gonna say, hey, let's let ostriches, the number of ostriches be represented by the letter X. And let's let the number of zebras be represented by the number of y's. Now you're gonna hear me say this a couple times today. It is so important that you start with this sort of a legend when you're building these systems, okay? Nothing you do makes any mathematical sense if you have not established at the very beginning who is x and who is y, okay? I haven't even told you what a system is yet, but I'm telling you how important this is Always start by establishing what you're, tell, what you're telling me X is and what you're telling me Y is. They're always, every question you do, you have to start with some sort of a legend that says, let X equal this or let the number of ostriches equal X, however you word that, but I need to know what X is and what Y is, okay? Now, using the number of ostriches and the number of zebras, we can actually come up with um, a couple of equations, okay? We talked about the fact that 
we had to have 60 eyes and we knew that there were two eyes on each animal. Okay, so that means the total number of ostrich eyes, if there are X amount of ostriches, the total amount of ostrich eyes could be represented by 2X, which would be two times X, okay? That way if I had 10 ostriches, two times X, that would give me 20 eyes, okay? So 2X plus 2Y, because it's the same conversation for the number of zebras, has to give me 60. That's where this first equation is coming from. This represents the number of eyes, okay? Now, we are always told kind of two sets of information. So in this, in this sort of scenario, we were told about the number of eyes and then we were told about the number of legs. So my second equation builds around the number of legs. We have said that ostriches have two legs and so that's where my two X is still there because two times the number of ostriches will give me the number of ostrich legs. But then zebras have four legs. So four times the number of zebras gives me the number of zebra legs. And then when I add them all together, that's gonna give me 86 legs in total, okay? so. That's where I get these two equations. Now this that I've just circled, that is called a system of equations, okay? They are both linear because in both of them, I have an X and a Y with no exponents. We talked about that in the previous units, how to know whether we had a straight line or not. So they're both linear. So this is called a linear system of equations. Now the word system just refers to more than one equation at once. So we're looking at more than one equation and that's why we call it a system, okay? All right, so this is called a linear system of equations. This means there is more than one equation dealing with two unknowns. In this case, our unknowns are the X, which is the, represented by the number of ostriches, and the Y, which is represented by the number of zebras. Okay, it's like having clues about pieces of a puzzle. Now, the solution, this is super important. The solution is the value for X and Y that make both statements true. Now, see if you can figure it out. Well, I already walked you through figuring it out, okay? I know that my X has to be 17 and my Y has to be 13, okay? So I know that the number of ostriches has to be 17 and the number of zebras has to be 13. So what I've walked you through so far in this first example is building the system. So building the system, you wanna create your legend and then you wanna build me the two equations, okay? Now, 17 and 13 is the solution to the system. I haven't actually showed you how to solve that yet. Do you see what I'm doing? We did it here, but this is not how we're actually gonna do it. This is just me taking your knowledge from junior high and applying it to this question, okay? Um, but we're confident because of all of this that we did, that there should be 17 ostriches and 13 uh, zebras. So now what we wanna do is verify that it works. That's the other piece of today. Verification is super important. Um, it's really important that you do it exactly as I'm about to show you because it's all about the mathematical communication, okay? Some of you are gonna look at what I'm doing and say, that doesn't make sense because why would I say two plus four equals six and then say six equals six? Because here's the problem, and just hear me out before I show you anything. You're not reading a verification left to right. You're reading a verification down. So what happens with a verification is you need to work on the left side all by itself without any thought about what the right side says. And then you need to work on the right side all by itself without any thought as to what the left side says. And you have to get them so that they end up saying the same number. And when they say the same number, you have verified it, okay? You're not allowed to bring anything over across the equal sign. The right side stays as the right side and nothing gets touched by it. And the, the I don't remember if I said right or left. I think I said right. So then the left side stays as the left side and nothing gets touched by it, okay? Okay, so here's what a verification would look like. I start with my two original equations and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in um, what I know for X and what I know for Y. I know that X is 13 and I know that, sorry, I know that X is 17. There are 17 ostriches and Y is 13, okay? So I have substituted in for X, 17, and I've substituted in for Y, 13. Okay. Now I do the math. So I'm working on just the left side, two times 17 and two times 13, two times 17 is 34, two times 13 is, is uh, 26. So that's where that comes from. Notice I'm just, I keep dropping the 60 there because there's nothing to do on the right side. Okay. Now some of you are looking at this and saying, I verified. 
I haven't. Okay, and this is so important. You're looking at this and saying it's verified because you're reading this way. But I don't want you to read that way. I want you to read this way. So right now, this still just says 34 plus 26. Okay, so we have to say what 34 plus 26 is, which is 60. So then you get a final statement here that says 60 equals 60. Now we have verified that equation. Okay, because we get a true statement. And what I mean by a true statement is it says 60 equals 60. If it said 40 equals 60, that's not a true statement. So something went wrong. Either you don't have the right solution or you made a mistake somewhere. Okay, okay. because I have a true statement, I know it works. Let's try the other one now. Remember I said that the solution is the value for x and y that work in both equations at the same time. So it's not enough to just verify that it works in one equation you have to verify that it works in both equations at the same time, okay? So here I go, plugging in 17 for x and 13 in for y. 2 times 17 is 34, and 4 times 13 is 52, and when I add those together, I get 86 equals 86. So again, I get the left side equals the right side, and everything's awesome. Because the 17 and the 13 work in both equations, we have found the solution to the system. So the solution to the system is the values for x and y that work in both equations at the same time, okay? So important, and you're gonna hear me say that a couple of times today because I really wanna get that in your head before we try and solve them. The solution to the system is the value for x and y that work in both equations at the same time, okay? All right, awesome. Now, we can verify a solution by substituting the known values of the variables into both equations. Both equations must be true. Sometimes you'll hear us math teachers say that that satisfies the equation, okay? If it satisfies the equation, it means the point works in the equation, okay? Okay, now, take a look at this guy. The following picture shows the cost of combinations of hamburgers and french fries. Build a system of equations to represent the information given, okay? So again, don't build me an equation until you've established a legend, okay? We're looking at hamburgers here and french fries, so you might wanna use the letters H and F. Great, if you don't tell me what H means and what F means, I can't mark the rest of it. I, you can't make me assume what H and F is. You can never make the reader have to assume. You must spell it out, even if you think it's completely obvious. It's all about communication, okay? So my legend is I'm going to let the cost of a hamburger be H and the cost of fries be F. So now if I'm gonna build this equation, I have three hamburgers. So the cost of three hamburgers could be represented by three H and the cost of two fries could be represented by two F and I know that that total cost would be 725. Likewise, with the next line, I have four hamburgers, so that's four each, plus one fry has to cost me 835, okay? So now, that's the system. You have built the system. The solution to the system is the value for H and F that would work in both equations at the same time. Now, before I stress you all out, there's a point I wanna make with this one. I started you off with something that you had junior high knowledge of to be able to solve. You could use your problem solving skills and get there, okay? What I want you to notice with this scenario is it would be a lot harder to figure out that answer, okay? Because we're talking about so many other combinations here, like uh, fries could cost me $2, but they could cost me $2.01, and that could change everything, right? Where this one was a little easier was because you either had an animal or you didn't have an animal, so these were all members of the natural family, okay? And so there wasn't as many possibilities. But in this one, when we're talking about price, there's a huge amount of more possibilities here, okay? So this is not something that you can probably guess and check. I'm gonna go straight and tell you the answer, and we're gonna see if we can verify them. So the answer is that a hamburger costs $1.89, and that the fries cost 79 cents, okay? So now what we wanna work on, remember, today is about building the system, and when you build a system, you have to show me your legend, and then you have to show me your two equations and then verifying the system. So I've now given you the solution. I'm telling you this will work, but I want you to verify it. So what we're gonna do is every time we see an H in our original equations, 
we are going to plug in $1.89. And every time we see F in our original equation, we're going to plug in um, in dollars, 0 0.79 or 79 cents to show that it works. So I'd like you to pause me and you do that verification yourself. Really, I just wanted a drink of my coffee. Um, okay, and so here's what the verification should have looked like. So you get 7.25 equals 7.25 on the first part of the uh, system. And on the second part of the system, it does verify and you get 8.35 equals 8.35. Again, I really want to make the point, you have to read down. That's why it's so important that I see this as your conclusion. I need to see the same thing on the left side and the right side. Okay, and this is the basis for a whole mathematical conversation you'll have over the next three years when we get into verifying and proving items. Okay, so I really want you to get comfortable with the specificity of this now. Okay, awesome. You guys are doing great. So, again, just to make sure you understand what we're doing, because the $1.89 and the 79 cents work in both equations, that has to work in both equations, we have found the solution to the system, okay? All right, let's try this guy together. You and your friend purchased identical subscriptions to an online video rental site. When you joined, you each paid the one-time membership processing fee. You also paid for each movie that you downloaded. By the end of the first month, you had downloaded eight movies and paid $16.50, while your friend had downloaded only six movies and had paid $14. So the first thing we're gonna do here is create a system of equations. Remember, you can't create a system of equations until you give me a legend. Doesn't matter what the legend is, but you have to give it to me. And then you have to follow through with whatever you say. So I'm gonna let that processing fee be X, and I'm gonna let the download cost be Y, okay? So both you and your friend had the processing fee, so that's just X. But then for the downloading, you downloaded eight, so that'd be eight Y for you, and your friend downloaded six, so that'd be six Y for them. So that's eight plus, sorry, X plus eight Y equals 1650. That represents what you got charged, and X plus six Y equals 1400. That represents what your friend got charged. Now, what was the cost per movie? Well, here's the great thing. Here's what I want you to see here. The only difference between you and your friend is two movies. And then the only difference in the price is 250. Do you see that? So that tells me right away two movies cost 250, which means the cost per movie is $1.25. Okay. Now, actually, what we just did was a simplified version of something called elimination, which we're going to talk about in a few days. That's one of the ways to solve systems of equations. We eliminated the X. Okay, but this one you just kind of were able to do logically. Um, so we'll talk more in depth about what elimination looks like um, later on uh, throughout this unit. So, okay, so we know that the cost per movie is $1.25. Well, hey, if we know the cost per movie is $1.25, is that now enough information to figure out what the processing fee is? Sure it is. All we have to do is plug $1.25 into one of those equations, and it doesn't matter which one, It'll give us X and X will be the same thing in both of them. So I chose the first one just because it was the first one I saw. Plugged in $1.25. Eight times $1.25 is 10, which tells me that the processing fee was $6.50 when I subtract 10 from both sides. Okay. All right. So just some working definitions here that we've been talking about. A linear system of equations is two equations with two unknowns. The solution to a system is the values for the unknowns, the values for X and Y, or for H and F, or for whatever your unknowns were, that will work in both at the same time. And we say that those values satisfy the equation. Okay, so satisfy again just means it works. So does the point 1, 10 satisfy Y equals 2X plus 5? Well, to check, you're going to plug 1 in for X and 10 in for Y. And this is a verification. You're going to see if it works. You get a statement that says 10 equals 7. That does not work. The point 1 comma 10 does not satisfy the equation y equals 2x plus 5, which also tells me that the point 1 comma 10 is not on the line, if you think back to your previous units here, with relations and functions and linear functions, the point 1 comma 10 is not on the line y equals 2x plus 5. Okay, does the point 2 comma 9 satisfy y equals 2x plus 5? Well, I plug 2 in for x and nine in for y, 
can I get 9 equals 9? Yes, that does satisfy. So 2 comma 9 works in the equation y equals 2x plus 5, which tells me the point 2 comma 9 is on the line y equals 2x plus 5. Okay. Remember, to be a solution to the system, it must satisfy both equations at the same time. It's no good to show me that it works in one equation. You have to show me that it works in both equations. Okay, so is <clears throat> the point four comma negative three a solution to the system? So I'm gonna take both of these equations, I'm gonna plug in negative three for y and four for x and see if I get a true statement. Okay, negative three minus four plus seven equals zero. So it works there. Next guy, I plug in four for x and negative three for y. I get eight plus three, which is 11. 11 does not equal 12. It worked in this guy. Whoops, sorry, I wanted to put my ink on. It worked in that guy. It did not work in this guy. It is not a solution to the system, okay? It has to work in both in order to be a solution. So it is not a solution because it does not satisfy both equations. Okay, now for each of the following situations, develop two equations that would model the given situation. Don't forget your legend. Your legend is so important here. Otherwise, nothing that you say to me means any sense if you haven't established what's what. So a school district, has small buses that carry 12 passengers and large buses that carry 24 passengers. The total passenger capacity is 780. There are 20 more small buses than large buses. Okay, so I have to come up with a system. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about the number of small buses and the number of large buses. So that's where my legend's gonna be. So I said, let X equal the number of small buses and let Y equal the number of large buses. Okay, now, I know in total, you're always asking yourself, what do I know about these things, okay? I know that there's 780 people that got carried. So I know a small bus will do 12 passengers and a large bus will be 24. So the number of passengers I can cram into a small bus can be represented by 20, or sorry, 12 times the number of small buses. That'd be 12x. So I end up with 12x plus 24y equals 780. That gives me all the number of passengers. And when you're setting this up, this may sound silly, but a lot of kids mix up the information. So you want to ask yourself, what am I talking about over here? I'm talking about people. What am I talking about over here? I'm talking about people. Okay. If I'm talking about people on this side and money on this side, that doesn't work. I have to be talking about the same thing on both sides. Okay. So that's kind of just a little check to make sure you're, you're setting things up right. Now, there are 20 more small buses than large buses. There's a couple ways you could do this, but you gotta be really careful with this. There are 20 more small buses. So the amount of small buses is a larger number than the amount of, of large buses, okay? So what we'd have to do is we'd have to say the small buses, the amount of small buses equal the amount of large buses plus another 20, okay? Be careful that you don't add 20 to the small buses. You don't add 20 to the larger number, you'd have to add 20 to the smaller number in order to make that equality balanced, right? The whole purpose of an equal sign is what's on the left is the same amount as what's on the right. So if what's on the left is a larger number, you wanna take what's on the right and add to it so that it equals what the larger number is. So I end up with x equals y plus 20, okay? now. We're not asked for a solution, we're not asked to verify, we're just asked to build the system right now. So that is the system, okay? Next guy, the perimeter of the Nunavut flag is 16 feet. Its length is two feet longer than its width. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the length and the width of this flag. So that's where my legend comes from. X is width, Y is length. <clears throat> a flag, 90% of flags are rectangular. If I didn't give you a rectangular flag, I would have told you. So the perimeter of a rectangle, you have length and length and width and width. So you would go uh, 2x plus 2y. So 2x plus 2y equals 16. And then its length is, you always want to take a look for this word in algebra, is. Okay. Is is always your equal sign. Okay. So on the left, we said its length. Well, its length is y. On the right, we said 2 feet longer than its width. Well, its width is x, and two feet longer than that, 
would be x plus 2. Okay, so that equation becomes y equals x plus 2. And now I have a system because I have two equations with two unknowns. Okay, all right. Um, in Calgary, a school raised $195 by collecting 3,000 items for recycling. The school received $0.05 uh, or 5 cents for each pop can and $0.20 for each large plastic bottle. So what are we talking about? What two things am I going to define as X and Y? We're talking about the small pop can or the pop can and the large plastic bottle. Okay, so X is, will be the number of pop cans and Y will be the number of plastic bottles. How many of those did I collect? I collected 3,000, so X plus Y equals 3,000, okay? Notice I'm not using the 195 there because the 195 involves money. So this guy and this guy and this guy are all gonna have to be part of the same equation because they all involve money, okay? So X plus Y equals 3,000, that's my first guy. The other guy takes into account the money. So it'll be 0.05x plus 0.20y equals 195. Okay, so 0.05x is the amount of money I get from the cans, and 0.20y represents the amount of money I get from the large pop bottles. And then I add those together, and that's the total amount of money that I get. Okay, good. All right. A store sells wheels for roller skates in packages of three and in packages of two wheels. There are 40 packages in the display and the total number of wheels is 100. So what am I talking about? What do I not know? I don't know the amount of three wheeled packages and the amount of two wheel packages. Okay, so that's where my legend comes from. X is going to be the amount of three wheel packages and Y is going to be the amount of two wheel packages. In total, I have 40 packages, so that's x plus y equals 40, okay? Notice none of those talked about the wheels. It's the second equation I'm going to do that talks about the wheels. So the amount of wheels I have in the three wheeled packages would be 3 times the number of three wheel packages I have. So that's 3x plus 2y, and then in total I have 100 wheels, okay? So there's my system of equations. Two equations, two unknowns. <clears throat> The rest of this unit, we'll talk about how to solve that, okay? All right, so let's summarize. All of the situations described are linear equations, meaning that the lines are straight. When working with, when we are working with more than one equation, this is called a system of equations. So as soon as you see the word system, that's gonna tell you you're dealing with more than one equation. When we have two unknown variables, we will need two equations to solve the system. If we have three unknown variables, we would need three equations to solve the system, okay? And we won't deal with that in a regular 10C program. Uh, the solution to a system of equations is where, now I actually haven't said this one yet, but this is kind of my snapshot into what we're gonna talk about tomorrow. So I'll just throw it at you as a teaser. The solution to a system of equations is where the graphs are intersected, okay? So here is your homework for this lesson. Uh, and again, really what we want to focus on here is building the systems and doing some verification. Make sure you're communicating nice and clearly um, and neatly, okay? And check in with me if you have any questions, okay? Take care, guys.